as you guys can see, I'm all alone here. JQ's driving to the ferry. We're going to do a podcast from a ferry, I guess. You got to talk about RCGP. is on his way to Sweden. I'm telling you, man, JQ makes life so hard for me sometimes. I just don't know what I'm going to do. But it was a good weekend at RCGP. We had a lot of fun. We got a lot to talk about. So if that said, let's just drop that intro. Nitro is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this money-grabbing book racing. It's hard not to be sense. arrogant when you're always right. Yeah. See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you <laughs> arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say but it's definitely worth a listen and our pick can you stop whatever you're doing join your host Letty the great with co-host and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our city. hey after that race that i watched this morning i have to talk about it here we go 100 bucks right here 100 dollar throw oh no <laughs> i like it Yes, indeed, not just the glory, but e-buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 201 of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host, Keena White, a.k.a. Left the Great, and I am so happy to be back behind the mic. I know I took a few weeks off, scheduled summer break. I knew I was going to RCGP. I knew it was going to be a long travel. I got back Wednesday evening. No, sorry, Tuesday evening I got home after traveling from the U.K., I went to spend a night in Madrid, and uh, then I came home, and it was a long travel home, like a four-hour drive home. So I was a little tired yesterday, so I took the day off. Uh, but back today, I had to record with JQ because he was driving to the ferry to go over to the Swedish Nats because he got to uh, be Rana Falk's engineer for this weekend in Swedish, Sweden. So hopefully good luck to Rana Falk. So Joseph's coming on in a little bit. Uh, once he gets to the ferry, uh, we're gonna he's going to message me, and then I'm going to contact him and bring him in. And then talk to him like that. But uh, so before you get Joseph in, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that came and showed the NNRC some love at the Nemo Raceway. Wow, it was mind blowing. Like, I did, you know, it's been a while since I've been to the UK. I really enjoyed my time over there. I, I really enjoyed it. I love the RC culture in, in the UK. I love UK culture, football, all this, like, it's just all the stuff that I grew up with, like Lucas Aids and Crunchy Bars. Like, ah, I was like, Ooh, I was like a kid in a candy shop over there. I really do like the UK. I could see me moving over there one day, taking my family and going there one day. But uh, thank you to all the hospitality and John and everybody and everybody that came up and shared the podcast some love. And I got to meet a lot of people that I've talked to for many years and they came by and shared me some love. Man, that's really heart woman. And I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. You've made it. You guys, oh, not just the UK guys, but everybody that's been involved and follows the NNRC. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to go on these trips. So truly, it's all because of uh, the people that came up to show me love and everybody around the world that shows the podcast and love. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, we couldn't do it. I couldn't be at these trips without And I'm getting to the world. So I'm super pumped about that. Ooh, I found that out while I was out there. So, yeah, I'm looking for some sponsors, though. If your company, you want to, if you're one of my sponsors, you want to sponsor this, let me know. I'm looking to get some sponsors to help pay for everything. Or if you want to sponsor left this trip, let me know. Uh, I'm looking for some help there, but I uh, got my plane ticket. I'm good to go that way. I know I got my plane ticket. Now I need to work on the other stuff, but uh, I'm super pumped. I had a great weekend in the UK. Great front bunny racing was awesome. And uh, I just can't say more about that. Uh, with that said, I'm going to, you know, shout out and say thank you to all of the awesome sponsors of the podcast. I know we're not doing a, we're just doing a recap with Joseph, not a real, you know, cause we don't have time. He's traveling. We don't know any internet's going to go on the ferry. So no segments. We're just going to talk about RCGP. Give us our, our opinion on it. And that's it. But I can't do this without the awesome sponsors of the podcast. They are Invisible Speed, TZO 200 Tires, 
High Tech RCD, TNR Fuels, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Lugs Racing Tires, g RC Tuning, Papa Willis Traction Tonic for all your traction needs, Sun Pedal USA, Racecraft USA. They just they just combined with True Form to make a cool uh, shirt. I think it's for American racers, but it's for everybody. It looks cool. It's different. I like it. It's like a pre-ordered. Uh, it's a shirt that, you know, it's not. It's different from your RC shirts, but it's meant to commemorate the 2022 American team going over to the world. So I'm going to pick me up one from them guys. Uh, so shout out to them. Shout out to Tony and Vicky at Clinic RC. Shout out to everybody at RCGP, David Isherwood, and all the colleagues that I work with this weekend, Control RC Racing TV. I really appreciate being able to work alongside some of the best in the in the world at what they do. House of RC, shout out to Connie, my boy. Shout out to the Viking Dave Rana folk who I wow, it's impressive driving all weekend. I was like big fanboy of that. Uh Jared Tebow, Alexander Hagberg, and of course the Spaniard, Robert Batty, all good friends of the podcast. Happy to have you guys on board. And a special thanks to all the NNRC squad around the world. I can't do it without you guys. And of course, to all the patrons who will get this early, thank you for all your support. We can't do it. I can't do it. And I'm going to the world because of you guys. So thank you for all of that. Uh, before I think JQ is ready to, to talk to me. So let's bring him on. Let's get right into the nitty gritty of this race. It was a good race. You want to talk about it. So let me get JQ. He should be on a ferry. By now. So this is the thing. He's on a ferry. It's going to be a little bit loud. I had to do this. We couldn't record yesterday. So excuse the background noise that you heard from JQ. Let's get a hold of JQ. What's going on, JQ? So here we are back to our janky recording schedule. It's been a while since I've been in the studio. Uh, I would ask you how you're doing, but I just saw you a few days ago. So, yeah. Yeah. So just for people to know why we don't see JQ and we see this. This thing here, this I guess that's him in his motocross get up. JQ is actually at the harbor waiting for the ferry to take him to Sweden, where he's going to be David Ronafalk's pit uh race engineer for the Swedish nationals. That's right. Where are the Swedish nationals, by the way? Unfortunately, in the su- southern part of Sweden. So six hour drive, I think. Okay, is it far from Ronald Fox House as well? Um, I think one and a half hours or so. And what's the track called? Uh, Hesleholm, I think it was. Mm, okay. Well, JQ, uh, thank you for coming on. I know you're kind of it's kind of stressful. You're back to traveling. Feels good. Does it feel good to be back traveling frequently, or are you getting kind of ready to stay home? Uh, well, I mean, it's not that frequent it it was frequent up until uh the euros and then after the euros was rcgp now this swedish race then the world's next so it's okay i just booked my ticket for the worlds by the way that's good yeah now i need to work out hotel and car yeah i'm gonna drive i decided i'm gonna drive the van down to spain okay but that doesn't help me no it doesn't help you Actually, the car rental isn't too expensive, and I was looking at a ho- uh, I'll see, Greg wants to find a hotel. He's like, oh, we got to find a hotel with breakfast and this and all this stuff. And I'm like, Greg, we're in Spain. We'll find breakfast. I'm pretty sure of that. Yep. In Spain with a Spanish speaker, I might add. So, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm super excited to get to the Worlds, but we're not here to talk about the Worlds. We're here to talk about RCGP UK, which went down this past weekend at Nemo Raceway and Bishop's Ishington UK. I have to say, Joseph, it was really good to be back in the UK. Really was. I enjoyed myself thoroughly. I did. Well, that's good. You know, I, uh, I, yeah, go on. You know, I got like for me, it's just familiar, like Lucas Aids, candies, all the stuff that you can't take away from me because you're not staying with me. So you can't rip it out of my hand and throw it out and litter like you did in California. But I didn't get to, you know, I'm just saying it's nice to see all that type of stuff. A lot of this stuff is very familiar to me as I was growing up. So I have a, you know, and I I, I honestly, like, if I had to leave the DR and I had to move somewhere, I'd go to England to live, I think. I know it's crappy weather and it's not always like it was this weekend, but I do like it over there. Yeah, it's it's nice, but uh, the whole Brexit thing is really annoying. 
Yeah, you got um, you, you know, dude, I had no issues. But mind you, I'm traveling on my Bermuda passport, but uh, you seem to just get in pure issues wherever you travel to. I'm telling you, man, you look like that damn terrorist. I need to find. I that do, picture. but uh, the real reason is that I'm I'm sort of uh, uh, an Ill- illegal, illegal almost. So you know that movie, The Terminal. Yeah, you're like a, <laughs> a guy for the man. country. I'm I'm literally waiting for the day that that's going to happen. I mean, that that issue is that I was born and raised in Finland, but I'm not Finnish. I'm a, I'm a Brexiteer now. So I'm a British citizen. And then when Brexit happened, it meant that uh, I was no longer sort of allowed to just be anywhere in the European Union. <laughs> and uh, I do have a permanent residency in Finland. But I don't really have anything to sort of prove that. So I would have to apply for some sort of Brexit, uh, uh, some some kind of, uh, what what is it called? Like a so what Brexit you're trying to say is that you might get deported to, Amer- to Britain one day. No, no, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But every time I cross out of EU yeah, or you have into issues. EU, they, they are just so confused. Like, yeah, what yeah. the hell? Yeah, I get that. I <laughs> and get now that. I've learned like I should definitely not say when they ask how long are you staying, like when I arrived from America to Germany, which was mm-hmm. my entry point to to the EU, I was confused myself. Like they asked how long do you stay, and I, my answer was something like, "Well, I don't know. I mean, I live here, so I live <laughs> in Finland, so I don't know how long I'm going to stay." And that was a mistake. I should have said, "Oh, just two weeks or something." Yeah, like you that. should. You got to learn yeah, to lie, so... <laughs> not, not lie, but. Yeah. Not tell the full truth throughout yep. these. You know, I've been getting super aggressive and like just learning how to travel. So this is my fifth trip out. Truly blessed. Uh, thank you to everybody for making that possible. So like with Expedia, you got little things like, okay, for $100 more, you get your free bag and you get to, you know, seat changes. And those are coming very valuable for me in this traveling because yeah. like for it's going to cost you $100 to take a bag anyway. But when you can add like, oh, $25 more and it gets you free, like free, like I was... So I have to admit, this was the best traveling for me. On the way over, I had like the business class. So I was like just behind first class. I had those nice seats. They were comfortable. That was so good for the eight-hour flight to London. And then um, when I was coming back from London to Madrid, because I had an overnight in Madrid. So I've been to Spain twice. Only seen hotels in Madrid so far. And bidets. So that's the only thing I could take pictures of. Excuse me. And... I had another like business class chair, and then luckily, uh, the plane the plane was freaking full, dude. The plane was full coming from Dominic from Madrid to Dominican Republic the next day, and I had a seat. I had two seats to myself the entire time, like but normal seats. You need two seats anyway. I do, I do not, but it was very comfortable. And and I might I might add that I did not have to use a seatbelt extension in any of these flights. By the way, I will add. Yeah, you used one from one seat and the other from the other seat. See, no, no, I just didn't do that. I just didn't do that. But anyway, enough about you trying to be rude to me because, you know, and you know what's weird at these races, so that these last RCGP races, we're not staying together because I'm staying with the RCGP guys. So it's weird not being at races that you're not, and you're there and we're not like staying together. It feels a little bit weird, but it's fun. You know, it's really fun. And I'm getting to know the other RCGP guys and uh, between Steph and Mao, like they just have me in extreme laughter. Like Steph so serious, Mao Italian. Yeah, it's funny. Anyway, JQ, um, I know you have limited time. I know guys, like what we haven't done like a full-fledged podcast in a long time. We Max and I will be back next week. Uh, we have guests and questions and all that type of stuff. Max been on vacation, his training for the worlds and all that stuff too. So next week we'll be back with a full-fledged podcast, but I wanted to get this RC GP recap in because I thought it was a great weekend. I wanted to talk about the race. I wanted to address some of the drama at the end of this and just talk about what I think was such a, a but was a good race and a good job in a race that was surrounded by a lot of negativity and a lot of drama that ended up being super positive at the end of the day. So anyway, with that said, let's, like just get right to the to the nitty gritty here. Let's talk about the track. So first off, I want to say thank you to N- Nemo Raceway Joseph. I'm gonna mute you because you're bird scratching. So I'm gonna say thank you to John Hazelwood, Mark Rumble, Lee Martin, and all of the Nemo Racing and Raceway crew 
that had us there. You guys were super hospitable to us. We and I enjoyed my time there. Uh, I can see the passion that they put into this track and him and his crew have done a great job. Uh, like everybody working together, you know, having a, a cafeteria there, having some, a lady working in the, in the, you know, in the shop and stuff like that. It's, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, if really like in the middle of a farm. So the slowly building all this type of stuff. So I, I enjoy that. I know. So let's just, let's go right off the bat and talk about the elephant in the room, the surface. So I know you're not a big fan of Astro Turf Surface, JQ, or Astro Type Surface. This is apparently a mix between carpet and Astro. It's a synthetic, synthetic fiber that John has imported from Amsterdam, or not Amsterdam, from Holland, sorry. Uh, he was telling me it got held up in the ports. That's why they were like finishing the track when we got there Wednesday. I know there wasn't a lot of features on, on the track. And a lot of people were pissing him in and on, on Facebook about it. It was a lot of negativity about that. But I have to say that besides have not having a lot of jumps and not having a lot of obstacles, the, the surface actually made for some of the best racing I've seen in a long time. And what I mean by racing, like I haven't seen these top guys make so many errors. And then so many, I w- it, we got to see so many different charge from the back type of uh, racing com- like for a certain month group of people. So yes, I feel it didn't have as many features. And, and John would tell you, he was the first people that they want all dirt. I understand why they want to do this. This is a sustainable f- uh, future. This surface can be used when it's raining. He wants to do thin scale modular jumps. I'm a big fan of this is a business. So he wants to operate this as a business. So I totally understand. And I think he weathered, the, the negativity and hate and everything because it was a lot towards him and this racetrack and everything. And I think, man, we came up with a great race in my, in my opinion. Even with all the jumps and all that stuff, the surface for me is what made this track extremely hard for some of the best races in the world. What do you think? Um, I think that, well, personally, I don't like this kind of surface. Yes, we know that. I know that. Uh, but it has to do with uh, not really the surface, but the grip, mm-hmm. right? And there's a way around that. That we we had one race in Finland where we raced on, uh, I think it was Astro. And what you need is a tire roll. So that actually solves the whole problem because if if you have this kind of surface, then we are we are going to use the tires with the most grip to be as fast as possible. And that's what causes the problem. When the grip is too high, uh, it becomes harder to drive. It requires uh, more knowledge of car setup. It wears the car out more. Everything about it just sucks, in my opinion. Uh, But there's a way around it where you choose a tire that limits the traction. You choose a tire that intentionally doesn't Mm -hmm. work as well on Mm -hmm. that surface which will make it feel like an off-roady sort of medium grip. You can slide a bit and then it becomes more fun. Uh, So if you have a track like that, I think the racing should uh, employ some kind of uh, tire rule. And uh, that control tire rule, that intention of it is to make the surface... uh, lower grip and that's going to be more fun and more off-roady for everyone and then the second thing is now it was very flat i mean mm-hmm. there were there were some bumps you couldn't really see in the video but you needed suspension for the bumps the surface wasn't yes. smooth but what i think also in uh, addition to using a tire which lowers traction so that allows the cars to slide a bit if you make the surface so you sort of build some rollers some uh, bomb holes some sort of di- some off camber stuff you make it a bit more on road so it's not mm-hmm. so flat that's also going to make it a lot more fun to drive so with those two things i think you can make uh, a track like this you can make a surface like this uh, enjoyable for everyone really yeah, and it's not to say that the people that were there didn't have fun. When I talked to the RC2 people, a lot of them enjoyed it. You know, they were figuring out their tires. But that's the beautiful thing. You can build a track 
and then cover it with this, you know, kind of similar to Robin Hood or like what they do in, you know, like I've seen in other tracks as well. So you can do that. And also they have, the, they're looking at metal jumps so they can change. I think what they want to do is change the tracker on a lot well more. And obviously they want to work for 10 scale. I do. Like the, I did like the multi-surface, like the brick corner. They did the, 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 actually. So having to set, it looked like for, for me, Having to set guys having to set their car up to handle the the astro or let's just say synthetic fiber from now on that part of the track which wasn't extremely fat because like you said there was little bumps and you could see it as it developed the bumps were break you know it was getting more bumps so it, bumps were developing on an even get more bump it bumps. did it no, did it in certain areas I was no, watching it didn't it. no it, it didn't get more bumps. the bumps got more actuated anyway. How? How did because they get it breaking through that points and all that astro? stuff because no, the, they did it's still no. moving out. no. No, I didn't. disagree with you. I no, disagree. Didn't get you. more bumps. The dirt uh, got more bumps. You. The carpet. Huh? But then you have the dirt part of the track, which uh, was amazing to see because I don't know if because we were because in the booth we could see it a lot more clear, and uh, you can see how that some of that some of that dirt section threw guys for a loop. That's where I saw a lot of people making mistakes too, and the you know just hitting the pipe or trying to stay on the on the line, and it was rough out there because the cars were set up. For such for the other part of the track, high grip and smooth, but uh, I I was wary about it at first, but I I liked it. I thought that the starting gate system was really good. By the way, the best one so far, as well, double layered, double tiered, operated by one person. Uh, people were able to it look, oh, like when you saw the RC Pro. I'm sorry, RCGP guys. All you saw was feet sticking out from underneath the the because you know the way the the, come on, the, the starting gate is. So people were taking pictures from, like, taking video from underneath there. So all you saw was legs sticking out from just, like, three or four people underneath there just braving all the smoke and revving up. And uh, <clears throat> it made for some interesting starts, man. All on carpet, lots of traction. Uh, it made for some drama, too. We're going to talk about that when we address the RC2 stuff, RCGP stuff. But very good, I think. I, I, you know, I know they're not a big fan of the surface. I know they have many plan, excuse me, much plans to change this. So I, I wish them all the best, but the passion is there and the track people and John, they, they really made this race what it was. I mean, they were there, they were busy <clears throat> every time they were working and anytime you needed something, John was there available for you. So thank you to them, man. I think it was, uh, you know, I think, so I think this is this also led to this being probably one of the best RCGPs so far that we've had this year. So kudos to them. Like I said, I know a lot of people were complaining and, and they want real dirt. And he'll, they'll be the first person to tell you they want real dirt. But, you know, I understand why they're doing this. So I just, it's the man's track. He has to make money at it. And he was saying he spent like 12,000 pounds in oil all for it to just wash away. That's not sustainable at all. As a track owner, so I understand it. Yeah, this obviously this will give more uh, track op open track days, and it will lengthen the season. So it makes perfect sense. But I really hope that they uh, figure out the tire situation because when it's when there is no control of the tire for racing, they're gonna end up using the tire with a lot of grip, and it gets it gets not just expensive, but difficult also and less enjoyable for many so well also yeah, this is supposed to be really good in the rain too so let's see how that works yeah in the rain it's low attraction so then i'm sure it's uh it's a different ball game but yeah it just gets too difficult when it's like this so well, I, I enjoy i'm, I'm not gonna big lie. fan was... of the tire rule yeah but i enjoyed watching the the rcgp guys struggle with this not struggle but i just i think... don't think they struggled it's... Well, I don't shouldn't say they struggle, but they would go very fast and they would this track would quick the surface would quickly reach up and bite you in the ass if you weren't paying attention. And you saw that a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, mean Yeah, because you have to drive like a certain pace, but if you're behind you can push a bit more and be faster, but then mm -hmm. the risk is higher, you know. So mm -hmm. if you're leading, you don't want to do that. So there's always that ability for the person behind to push a bit more risk it a bit more and that's that's one thing that makes for for good racing when it's a situation like that yeah that's what i enjoyed about it all right so 
uh, we talked about the track and we talked about that. Next up, RC2, slightly more entries than than Italy. I think uh, talking to everybody there, they seem to have a great time. Looking on Facebook, everybody had a lot of fun. Big Mayako and Nemo presence, obviously, because of, you know, it's a Nemo raceway. Uh, and Mayako, uh, Scott, what Scott's done over there, so it was a lot of Mayakos. I would say next most cars I saw were S-Works. They had the most cars in the, R- well, they had the same amount of cars as Mayako in the RCGP class. Uh, I They had a big, I saw a few Mugens, a few X-Rays, one Serpent. I think two Mugens. Two Mugens, uh, two H, two HBs, uh, and I think two- actually there were most Mayakos there more than Agamas. Maybe Scott told me. Okay, That's I don't know. Pretty. That's cool. It looked like it was a lot of Agamas there, but um, it, it doesn't matter. But uh, there, doesn't was matter. Of, there was a oh Jesus! Is everything a competition for you? Can we just talk about RCGP? Yeah, I just gave you a fucking fact. Jesus, doesn't matter. Christ, green herd. Uh not too many. A uh, couple of HBs. It was good to see Thomas Musso come over uh, with his girlfriend. He also bought the younger cousin of Jerome Sartell. Tom Sartell was driving Mugen. He was actually very impressive as well for a young guy. Uh, a big Irish contingency came over. So it was like Andrew Rennick and the Mayako guys that came over. It was great to finally meet Andrew of Model Tune. And then you had like Andrew, I'm um, sorry. Uh, Barkley Abernathy, who's like, I believe, the man behind the Federation and the track over there, because I really like the track that they have over in Ireland, that they have the Piston Paddy. Have you ever been over to that track, JQ, no. over to the Piston Paddy? It looks so great. Another real, truly multi-surface track, so thank you for them for coming over. Unfortunately, with Craig Drescher there, Ongaro there, and it was nice to have Tom Robin there, but Man, I really would have loved to have seen Neil Craig and at this at this race, you know. Yeah, this race had, I mean, the entry was small. I get okay, but small. Mm-hmm. But the issues, I mean, the date screwed it really. I mean, yeah, we're gonna talk it's about same that. same time as a ten scale national, so that mm-hmm. eliminated a lot of people. Yeah, and then also it's two weeks before the national, mm-hmm. and first there was drama that. Okay, you can't attend if you want to attend the national because it's within two weeks. Then they allowed it, but then they also organized a race the week after. So this weekend, uh, there's also a race there. Yeah, and, then and there was a weekend following, race before. The following well. weekend, uh, there's a national. So there's four weeks in a row of races there, and the last one of them is the national. So this one, a lot of people then skipped. So that was really annoying. This could and should have been a race that's full, just like America. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that sucked for RCGP that the date was such that it didn't get uh, full entry. Yeah, it sucked that a, a voice, a boisterous few made it difficult for everybody too, as well. Oh, um, well, yeah, the Skidmore's complaint. Well, we'll talk about that. Let's talk about it on our JQ Racing rant because I want to dedicate okay. that uh, to a whole rant. Uh, but unfortunate, like, I would have liked to see Darren Bloomfield come up. He got a, the, this was the This was the one race where RCGP said, all right, screw it. Everybody can race. You know what I mean? And it, it was a shame not to see the Clancy's. And he was up there, mind you. It was good to meet him. Yeah. Not to see those guys. This was this would have been an opportunity to get all of that on video and then eventually for everybody to see the the proper proper talent that the UK has has garnered. I have to say this. Yeah. The, the 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 BRCA and the UK have done a damn good job of the youth. I will say this. It was very good to see a lot of fast, young racers at this race. And we know that the UK has a lot of fast racers, like the Hall brothers. And they put a lot of time and effort into the youth. And I think this comes from having a proper federation, even though I have my issues with the BRCA. It needs to be updated, like a lot of them. But this comes from, I think, having a proper federation and having the club aspect of racing that is so... Uh, ingrained deep and truly truly amazing in, in the UK. I think this is this is uh the fruits of the those seeds that were sowed many, many years ago. So it's, it's fathers that are bringing their sons into racing and you know they they treat for me it just feels like they treat the youth a lot better and encourage them a lot more. I don't know. I have no info about that. Yeah because you just you're like well, a horse with freaking 
uh blind as one you just you can't see all of that but i would and there was a lot of young guys there the the actual final was full of young guys i want to shout out to like maxim cook so maxim cook actually and his dad they won an entry to this race uh actually adam reevey won it and he wasn't gonna be able to make it so he gave it to them and they weren't gonna be able to make it and they came up and they were strong they were hb they're like one of the hb cars there and they were struggling at first and then i think like musa helped him out and they, he came in the fifth. Like, he was leading. He was doing pretty good. He was third for a while. It was good to see the young guys out. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all of the RC2 people that came up to to support through, throughout all the drama and the nonsense that was going on around this race. People still came up, supported it. And if you if you, if you you talk to people, there was sm- and he was there, there were smiles all day long. People were having fun. And if you look on Facebook and the general consensus, like I see 99% positive. Was it perfect? No, but it's it's been damn good. And a uh, big thank you to those guys. And of course, all the people that came up to spectate as well. We did get some spectators on, on the Saturday, Sunday. That was good to see. I was, I, I will talk about something that and later on, but in our rant, but some things that I wanted to talk about. But yeah, thank you to those people. And hopefully if, we do this again next year, and it's in the UK. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to sell out, no matter how much people try to nefariously stop it. So that's good to hear. Good to see. Thank you to all those people that came out. And congratulations to uh, Kevin Brunson, who had an excellent race. Uh, he, was, he was the fastest all weekend. I, I thought I thought that Musso was going to really take a challenge to him, but he just in the end, nothing really happened. And, and Brunson was the fastest guy all weekend in the RC2 class. Yep. And uh yeah, also big shout out to Scott Walker for almost decapitating his dad in pit lane as well. Most imp- I didn't see him, that. And, him and Angaro, the most impressive crashes on the uh straightaway. Angaro did that in a 60 minute final too. And Mara oh, I missed that. I missed oh, I that saw one. it. That was <laughs> crazy. So yeah, but good can stuff. we talk about the race now? I don't yeah, want to the race. Jeez, I'm calm down. Let's go to RCGP. All right, JQ. So I think uh, probably one of the best lineups so far out of the RCGP guys. I think uh, yeah. having Peko. So we had Ongaro, Ronde Falk, Kanas, Boots. Uh, those those guys were like the, oh, the four you... top guys really in mm-hmm. people's minds, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, then we also had Lee Martin, who yes. was a step above what he has been because it's Nemo Raceway and mm-hmm. he was running the new N1 prototype with the sort of inboard lay down shocks and uh, yeah he was really good and then we also had a surprise for many I'm sure which was my replacement uh, a rented driver from Hobby Factory in Finland because Pekko even and he races 10 scale <clears throat> for Schumacher Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have an eight scale deal, actually. He's sponsored by a local hobby shop and he runs Associated because they sell Associated. But for this race, I I asked if he could uh, make a guest appearance and race the Mayaka at RCGP and they agreed. So we promoted Hobby Factory and uh, he could run the Mayaka for the race. And he did exceptionally well, I would say. Yes, he did. Better Better than I expected. And better than he expected. I think his expectations were lower than what I had for him. I thought he would, you know, be a top five guy, but he was way better than that. He was in the seeding runs and practice. He was one of the fastest guys the whole weekend. He was like Ronne Falk Ivonen. That was it. Yeah. Like almost every practice was insane. Like Ivonen, he would be up there at first and then Ronne Falk would just tip him at the end. Except the last practice, Ivonen actually won. But uh, yeah, it uh, it was surprising impressive. and impressive. Yeah. Well, not only that, I, I I was thinking maybe we should go through each driver and tell us give our opinion on them real quick. So okay, uh, let's start with with the the lower guys. Uh, James Lapovo. I wanna. It was nice to meet them from Guernsey. Apparently, it's very similar to Bermuda. Very rich. Very small. Um, kind of James Lapovo. He does well on the, on the national scene there in in the UK. But, you know, a little bit, I think a little bit, this is, you know, these guys are really good, but they came in and they, they, put yeah, on a but I think he was also a, a feeling really for 
you know, shooting for someone like right. oh, really? Neil, Neil Craig or, yeah. or Bloomfield or something like this. But then because of the 10 scale national and other things, well, there Bloomfield was no one. Was not because of the 10 scale national, but we'll talk about that. No, there was no one. And then, uh, so then he, yeah, he uh, got the spot. But it's it's good. They they kind of came out of nowhere, uh, and they came up. He has a really nice BMW, by the way, and they were very nice about it. They looked like they had fun. Um, Clement Boda was nice to finally meet him. We'll start with the HRC team. Uh, only been racing eight scale for a while. You can see that they were struggling a bit on that side of things. They are really good on ten scale, but Clement has pace, you know. And uh, I hope that they race a little bit more nitro. And yeah. They do that, but he's definitely got some skill, young Frenchman. Uh, very nice for them yeah. to come by. They look really good in the Beach RC blue, by the way, Brent. Uh, the brightest you can see that from a long time. The only thing we got to change them colors, man. Them Beach RC cars and them associated cars are too close, man. Yeah, Ooh. I know. I said that from the beginning. Like, the they whole are point so hard of that, to tell apart. The whole point of that body shell thing was you can say the red car, the blue car, the green car, and it's like Mayako is white. Uh, invisible speed is green, and then the rest are like, like whatever. <laughs> I mean, Nemo, I guess you can tell like a black and orange, but S works. What the hell were they thinking? Why can't you just make a red car? Your brand is red for God's sake, red and Fucking white. Yeah. Paint a red body, make red and white, make S works the red car, okay? But instead, they have some vomit black and red, well, it doesn't even look good you? in the pink in the pits, just okay? Throw... And on the track, you can't even tell what it is. Well, and then, well. then you have uh, it associated, your colors are blue, clearly blue, red, and white, for example. Just make a car like that. <laughs> no, instead it's like blue and white and gray. You can't really tell. It's a bit bluish blob going it's around hard. the track. And then BHRC has the same bluish blob. So you have four blue and white cars. You never know who is who. This it's very so hard. stupid. It's very so hard. Fu it fucking pisses me off. If I, I, I was, this is, you know what? This is oh, how you know that I am not running RCGP. This is how you know. Because if I would not fucking accept it. You would find them? Shit, you would find No, them, I would not accept it. It was like, when the season starts, I'm like, S-Works, make a fucking red body. That's the whole point. Uh, BHRC, okay, you're baby blue. Uh, associated, what are you? Red and blue? Okay. Like, I would make a clear distinction. When you see that, tell me if I'm wrong. You glance at the track and you, you can't see tell the difference. When you glance at the track and you see Pecco, do you know it's Pecco? Yes, yes you fucking because, know. Yes, because he had the antenna too. Yeah, but the, you know. When mm -hmm. you glance at the track, do you know that it's not a fuck? Yes, you do. Yes, because, because it's a fucking white, white car with white wheels. Yes. So that's the whole point. It's a simple concept. You look at a video, you have to know who the guy is. You look at a video now and you have no idea if it's Ongaro. It could be Tom Robin, even fucking Boots. He mistook Ongaro for Tom Robin. Mm -hmm. in in the second uh, main on Saturday. Yeah. And that this is a fucking simple concept. It's a simple concept, but we have to play ball. Yeah. I uh I think it would be a lot easier, especially if, for people if following. We, yeah, if we want RCGP to succeed, we need to play ball. All the teams need to understand the concept and support it. Right? I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. It's the only way it's going to succeed. I agree with you. If we all work together, we understand what we're trying to achieve and we make it happen. Okay. okay. I agree with you. Can, can there. we, can There's we my talk first about the body okay, smell? Let's go. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you got that out of your system, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Glad you got it's that out. Very frustrating. I can tell. I can tell. Uh, let's continue with our drivers. So, we, Tom Robin, Brave Face coming back in. Uh, him and him and, and Rana Falk had some issues for the hill. Him and everyone actually. had some issues. Him and Top everybody. Team, said yes. Yeah, he, Ong, he even he, I think even didn't even Ong that I have something. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember, but pretty much everyone and him had some issues. I felt bad for him because I don't think he was doing it on purpose. Like, especially on the starts, I think his he car was just kind of kind of into no, 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 no. He is the kind of driver who doesn't have a sort of uh, racing etiquette, I would say. You, When you drive around the track, it's it's kind of how the CTO thing came about. You remember? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you can drive this speed into a corner. You know it. When there is a car there, 
you can't drive that fucking speed into a corner. You have to slow down a bit, right? You have yes, to yes, pay attention. You have to be a bit careful because you don't know exactly what the other car will do. Is the other guy going to get a bit out of shape? Is he going to make a correction? Is he going to break a bit sooner than you? So you make up for that. You sort of pace yourself a bit. You slow down a bit earlier. You observe what the other car is doing. It, it doesn't mean that you're going to lose time, but you drive a bit differently. But he doesn't. He just full wood, like aggressive everywhere. If there's a car in front and that car in front isn't as aggressive as him, he's going to fucking wing that guy, take him off <laughs> the track, you know, take him out. <laughs> but it, that's it. Like, and in the main, he was like 21 laps down or something because they changed, broke and fixed something, whatever. And he was still doing it. Like he was still racing other guys and causing issues, taking people out. Like, so there's no excuse. There's no excuse for that. That is just yeah. bad. Hey, David was etiquette. really upset with him. I've, I really see David get ang like upset or aggressive, and he was he was he was very um, well, well for good reason. But yeah, and like, I like it because then he, like, he was driving aggressively. Yeah, but he's he's a nice guy in the pits, he's, you know. But it's just he needs to slow down. Respect that. No, he needs to respect the other cars on the track. Be conscious of what his surroundings. Yes. Are. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, next up, I want to say Brandon Ruiz. Uh, it was good for B Ruiz to come over. I think uh, he didn't get to practice on the practice day and this being completely different for him. <clears throat> he had some glimmers of brilliance, but a, a struggling weekend for Brandon, I would say. He ended up uh, ninth overall in on Sunday. Not a good weekend for Brandon, but first time out of America, he looked like he had fun. Yeah, and I think and, he had that one qualifying race where he was yeah. up there and he actually stayed pretty high up too. Yeah. Like he towards the end he improved. I think the surface was the biggest issue. Probably never raced on anything like that. And also early on, like because of his struggles and also being in the back and being a bit off the pace, then he was also all he seemed to always be sort of the losing party mm -hmm. of any contact or anything. Yep. So yeah, in one race something happened. And he smashed his and, glasses. Uh, yeah, he like he, he was cursing apparently on the driver's stand and just smashed his sunglasses and then everything exploded everywhere. So yeah. I missed that, but I was told about it. So yeah, yeah. he was uh yeah, passionate I like that guy though. up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. So it was good he, to see B Rose over in England. Uh, uh, good for him. First time traveling out of America opens his eyes a lot. Um I don't know how he's not on the list for America to be going to the Worlds, but uh, he said he'll be there. So I'm, I hope he is there. Another great experience. Very good young developing racer, in my opinion. Great attitude, too. And I expect big things from B. Rose. You know, he's probably out of school now and doing this full time. So I'm a fan of his, and I want him to do well. I really do. Uh, Alex Zankatine, one of Alex's better races, I would say, this week. Uh, he's off the crutches. He's he had he was in the mix a lot of times, but um, like a lot in this race, little simple mistakes or just misjudgments would take you out, and that would happen to him a lot. But uh, I think on the Saturday he finished. Um, let's see, on the Saturday he finished. Do we have, I have third? Before. Yeah, so that's good overall for him. I would say that was very good. Yes, and it was a funny podium because. Um, no one really expected him, including mm -hmm. himself. No one really expected him to be third. So when he ended up third, everyone was like, who's third? And then it was him. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So just for it people to know as well, we'll talk about it when we get to run a fucking Longaro. All right. Uh, we said, Rose, I would have to say next would be, even though he, he done, uh, mm, let's see, let me, Lee Martin, or are we going to put Lee Martin? Yeah, we'll, we'll go Lee Martin next because Lee was impressive all weekend with the new car. Um, you said that already. I think he finished fourth on on uh, on Sunday, but fifth overall on the Saturday by the time after the two legs. Great weekend for Lee. He was super busy, dude. Super busy. He was helping everybody, doing track stuff, fixing the car because, you know, they were running the 3D printed stuff. So they had to fix a lot of stuff. The, I, he would, he did tell me that the N1 is going into production and it should be by the end of the year or maybe the new year. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Um, about the car? Or about yeah, the, car, Lee. Yeah, I mean, I've said it before. 
I think it's really good that they are doing something different, but I do still think that there are some, because it's different, they have to do some things that are quite different to what we are running now. And I'm not sure that they've done that. So on a track like this, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. They can, they can make, they can get away with it on this track. It's flat, high grip. Uh, that's fine. And you, you just manage it and drive around the dirt parts. Right. Mm -hmm. But like go to DNC, then go to Montpellier, then go to buggy land, right? Three very different tracks and surfaces. The car has to work at all of them, right? That's the issue that they will face or are facing, right? <laughs> so, yes, Lee was very fast here, and uh, that's good. It shows that it has potential. The, um, the, if, if it didn't, he couldn't be fast, right? <laughs> but you have to remember that this is one very unique type of track. Yes. And yes. it's the unique type of track that that system will work on, right? So uh, we have to wait and see if they have figured out those those things you need for these other types of tracks. Yeah, exciting times. I, I'm excited to see the production version of this and when it gets in the hands of everybody and everybody can get it. So, But like you said, we need this type of push to innovate things and you never know unless you try so i wish them all the luck with that lee finished fourth on sunday by the way uh i i, I kind of have hampus after i should have had hampus before lee but i missed him uh hampus struggled a lot on this weekend but uh he was able to pull off a third on the sunday which was great for him and early you know like you know he didn't he okay yeah, Pamp has done. I, he struggled. Like the the high grip was struggling for him. He did have. He was. You know, he had some pace, but he's never really kind of. Um, you know, I never thought I'd see him. You know, I said, well, if, if he can finish top five, it will be good. But uh, a third place on on the Sunday, and let's see where did he finish. Well, he was eighth overall on Saturday. So good finish for Hampus. Hampus is definitely improving rapidly i would say uh yes uh humpus was i think humpus surprise was more so in italy for me i mean mm -hmm. he qualified mm -hmm. third got into super pole on sunday mm -hmm. and he did really really well there um he would have had a very high finish on sunday but he broke a servo in the, in the main i agree with you so that I was unfortunate so that for me was the sort of breakthrough or surprise, I would say. Like, he was better than I expected. Yes. At this yes. race, he he kind of did what I expected. Um, but how the race unfolded, it was just then awesome on Sunday that he made the podium and finished third. Yes, yes. Uh, so he, I think, starting off, he was a bit, he was struggling a bit with the surface. Mm -hmm. and the setup because he can't run the same setup as david right so david got comfortable and found the setup he liked uh pecco also same uh but i think pecco runs more 10 scale so he's used to carpet he's used to uh astro he knows what he wants the car to do mm -hmm. so pecco and david were comfortable quickly while uh, Hampus wasn't. So he showed sort of flashes of speed, but he couldn't get it together and be consistent. But then as the race progressed, we found the setup that he needed and he was more comfortable. And, and then it started going better. So Yeah, great yeah, run was, for him. Yeah, and he, he did well race. at the Euros too. Very good run for him at the Euros. Yeah. Um, I expect him to do well at the, at the Worlds coming up. Semis, I think, is... is a good, a good goal for him. Anything above that is great, you know? Yeah. And I think next year we're going to see Hampus improve immensely. He's just, he's getting better every time I see him. He's yeah. getting confident too. He's having yeah. fun. He's your little brother, little big brother. He's older than you because he's quieter than you, but you're still, he's younger than you. So good job, Hampus. It's good to see Hakan again. And that's good for, you know, David was happy as well. That's his Padawan. That's his protege. So good stuff. I think we're gonna now we're gonna touch on the fast guys, these guys who were uh probably faster than everybody there, I would say, but still I have to have them ranked in a little bit. And I, I have to say that 
I have Ongaro as the beginning of all the even though he won on sat on Saturday, I never saw Ongaro as a true threat threat all weekend. Like I saw that Boots had pace immediately and JCC had pace immediately. And then obviously Peko. But Ongaro, I you know, I just watched I watched Peko and, and David hunt him down too many times while racing and catch him up. You yeah. Know? So um, I'm not saying that he wasn't fast. I just don't think he was the fastest of these fast guys at this race. Make sense? Yeah. Ongaro, for me, was interesting because he has a bit of a unique driving style and setup style. So I was curious to see how he would do here because you can't slide the car at all. You can't fit, You can't rotate the car with a sort of loose rear end. The car will grip always. Um, so I was curious to see how he would do, and he did as expected. I'm driving onto the ship right now. If I can tell. So we probably won't <laughs> so, have much time left to talk. Uh, so as expected, uh, Ongaro did improve throughout the event, and yeah, he was a contender. So that just shows how. Good he is. Even yeah, even though he's uh, even though he has this u- unique setup style, driving style, he can still adapt it to every kind of surface. Really, he isn't as dominant as good everywhere, mm-hmm. like DNC, super rough, bumpy, crazy US style. It's not his strongest suit. But one year he battled for the win there, finished second. This Astro for sure is not his strongest suit, but. He won on Sunday, right? Uh, but yep. he wasn't dominant. Like, David was faster. He uh, always so, finds a way, that, that yeah, yeah, so, yeah, impressive. I must I must say that this advanced stage of the of the Poodle haircut is definitely... In, I'm watching it. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it as we go, you know? And it's it's really got a lot of detail to it now. It's all different tints of... Oh, yeah. within, within the herd. So I found uh, I found the reason for this, by the way. No, but it's I, an Italian he, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's an Italian. Uh, it's some kind of young fucking TikTok uh, fashion thing, whatever. But his mom is a hairdresser. Oh, okay. yeah. So, yep. <laughs> so, but I mean, I really got to look at it in the in the in the sun, and you can see all the different shades of color. It's like really yeah. some attention to details going into this. This isn't just like a fact, you know, this isn't just like, hey, let me, I heard like this, a lot of attention and it has, it has evolved over time. So The backwards um, mullets. Well, I call it the poodle. So, the poodle. Uh, all right. Next up, Elliot Boots, man. Elliot Boots was fast right at the, ba- at the get, at the get go. He was, you know, he was fast throughout the hill. He was, he was in qualifying. He was fast on the stuff, but just seemed to struggle in the mains. I mean, he did finish six of all. I do. I know he flamed out on throughout the main as well. I'm gonna mute you for a second because I just heard you zipping up stuff. Uh, he, he he was fast. Boots was out here a lot practicing previously to this, uh, but unfortunately he didn't. He, you know, if a fifth on the on the uh, Sunday, and uh, let's see where he finished overall on. On uh, are you there, Joseph? I probably muted him. Hold on, I did mute him. JQ, are you there? Oh, yeah, I'm here. You said you were okay. gonna mute me. Did you forget? Yeah, but then I, when I when I asked you what's up, JQ, you should answer. You I know? did, but you had muted me. So he finished third on the rush. On oh yeah, you can unmute yourself. He thir- finished third on rush. He finished. Did he finish third? Hold on. Let me. I do like uh, watch me call it, but it is a bit long-winded so he finished third on on and then he just what no it's not it? overall no overall he finished uh seventh so he had an 11 and a two so on um, you know and as but he boots, did pip. boots had speed this is mm-hmm. like boots story i mean he did win two euros yes but most of the time boots is one of those guys who has speed but something's going to go wrong so he's not going to win mm-hmm. like he's going to make a bad mistake he's going to have a technical issue he's going to flame out like that's what what i think when i think boots there's yeah, it's unfortunate. Like, he flamed out in the 60 minute main ran out of gas yeah, where he could have finished a lot better i get the feeling that there's some there's one 
ingredient missing from his program something mm -hmm. that maybe the way he sets his car up uh there's something that is a bit off and when he was with kyosho when he uh back when you know he took the world in argentina uh he, he won euros all that stuff Th like the car suited him mm -hmm. his package was good everything was working that's when he was his best. Every other time, it seems that there's something missing. He's good. He shows flashes of brilliance, but it's not like from beginning to end solid. Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's some. There's something is off. I would agree with you there. He was definitely one of the fastest guys here, but just don't have the results to back it up. Yeah, and this this race also he had a slight advantage because the week before he did uh, the national there, but I think he didn't even run e buggy, which would have helped him more. I think he ran run truggy, but mm -hmm. still, you know, the surface, the kind of figure out what you need, know the layout, all that stuff. So definitely yeah. helped. But yeah, I to be honest, I did expect uh, slightly better results from him. I'm sure he did too. He was very frustrated at the end, it looked like. Yeah. Um, it was good to meet his dad, though. He enjoyed himself. I just saw him yeah. chilling out, drinking up tea and watching the race, yeah. giving Justin some shit. Uh, we're going to talk with Justin got a lot of shit this weekend. All right. So that brings, so I don't know. I'm trying to give him a new nickname. I don't know if it's going to work. Cream, because I said, yeah, the cream always rises to the top. And Juan, Carnes, Juan Carlos Canas is cream. Or la crema. I don't know. I have to ask my wife if there's a acceptable Spanish terms. But I like JCC. Uh, Juan Carlos Canes. I, 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 one of the fastest guys her all weekend. Um, just having bad luck in his mains. So I believe in his. So his second final, he had to. He he had to he had a he in his second second leg final he pulled out to a, a great lead. While Rana Falk and Ongaro were battling out. And then he made that mistake on the I went back and saw the replay, which you can see it's up on uh YouTube, by the way, RCTP YouTube, uh, where he went off the bridge and went under that modular jump on that tabletop. There, sorry, went off that tabletop and went off this. I don't know how he did that. Like such a bad mistake yeah. cost him the entire race, like entire win. Yeah, but there's bad luck and there's bad luck. There's different kinds. Yeah, uh, this is like the kind where you, you sort of cause it yourself. Mm -hmm. You make your own luck to a great extent. Sometimes something happens where it's just like incredible and you couldn't affect it in any way. I think this race, it was all, all sort of, uh, you make your own luck kind of situations. First time yeah, I've seen him get frustrated the, too. Yeah, he had the pace, but uh, yeah, things didn't go his way. And I think also it's sort of, he's also one of those, drivers who has a past of uh you know ruining yeah. people <laughs> driving through people i mean and i think this race really sort of went the other way he got a taste of his own medicine he, yeah he he did he did cause a big upset on the sunday in the first qualifying race because Pecco was leading and Pecco was going to win it and then uh four corners from the end last lap uh kind of winged him ended up caught under Pecco's wing and uh, that was it. So he did have those moments still where yeah, he and that should have been a bit more patient. But overall, when you look at it, it was like he was on the receiving end. Uh, one time coming onto the straight, David oh. was right behind him. And he, he just, I think David said that uh, Kanas <laughs> just clipped the pipe going onto the straight. So he wasn't able to carry full speed through the chicane where David did. So he just ended up driving through uh, Kanas. So they both crashed. Yeah. And uh yeah, and so there were really just those situations, that. yeah, where he sort of uh ended up losing losing out because of contact. But that's yeah. that's it. Like when when you dish it out like that, sometimes it's it's gonna bite you too. And well, uh, that's how it goes. Yeah, think back to Italy. I mean Ongaro and him were really Ongaro was really upset at him, and then this weekend uh, I I remember just watching him walk off the stage, like telling off Justin in in Spanish, and Justin like saying, "Hey, I'm just trying to keep, you know." He this is all Justin explained. He said, "Pecco, you caused him to lose the race." You know what I mean with that mistake? Yeah. And he said, "With Ronafalk, 
I kind of, you got the, like, yes, it was silly by Ronald Falk, but he got the worst of it and you got, you kept on going. So I'm not going to ruin the entire race just because of that. And yeah. I, I, I get that. I get that. Well, wow. I've never seen uh JCC frustrated and he was frustrated and the S-Works people were frustrated too. Um, yeah. They were frustrated at the Mayako guys and, you know, there was a whole bunch of, oh, you got the referee in your pocket and all this type of stuff. Well, just yeah, well, that's you- bullshit because uh, on the Saturday, then in the second leg of the two-leg uh, sprint finals, Beko was in a position to podium. He would be third overall, but his pit stop, he didn't, like he made a mistake coming into the pits and hopped the mm-hmm. pipe. But he also hopped the second pipe and was off the track and then came back. So he lost time coming into the pits. But because he hopped that pipe, he got a drive through penalty. Because before the main, it had been explained, you have to go around the pipe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if if the referee was in Mayako's pocket, then for sure he wouldn't have got that penalty, which actually dropped him off the podium. So, yeah, there is yeah. that. But unfortunate for JCC, he got a little bit of. I would say I like I like Juan Carlos. Uh, I don't think he drove. I think the incident with Paco was more of a more of a racing incident. I would say. Yeah, too. But I mean, listen, yes, but every single him, it listen, him to a lot of positions. Every it single him. Tom Robin incident is a racing incident. Okay, <laughs> but it's the attitude of the driver behind that determines how that racing incident goes. You don't see some drivers. You don't see Lee Martin fucking winging other drivers out there con- constantly. No, no. No, you don't. No, no. Why does Lee Martin not have those racing incidents? Why? Because, because he respects the car in yes, front. I agree. That's it. I agree. And Connors is learning that. And that I would say moment that he with, is that running. moment, yeah, that moment with Beko shouldn't have happened, but it did. Mm-hmm. Okay? So there's still some of that like over eager aggressiveness in there. Like there is no fucking gap, okay? There's nothing to go for yet you end up under the guy's wing. Then you know that you have done something wrong, right? He wasn't trying to overtake. There was no space. That's why Pekko went slower than on other laps because he was protecting the inside. So there's no way this guy can get by. So he has to know that. This is the last lap going through the last few corners. Obviously, the guy in front is going to protect the inside. So you have to be extra careful. Right? These are the things that, as a driver, you have to learn. You have to learn to re- understand what situation we are at in the race, what is most likely going to happen, and then you act accordingly. So, yeah, it's a racing incident caused by him, okay? And when he adjusts his attitude and his action, that won't happen. He would have finished second at the race. Maybe Pekka would have made a mistake in the last corner, and he could have got by and won it. But now he got a penalty and he finished seven. So you as a driver have to know what situation you are in. Uh, where are you in the race? It's the last few corners, right? So mm-hmm. you are extra careful. You know that the driver in front is going to go slow and protect the inside. You know that because we are right coming to the end, right? So you have to understand that. You adjust your driving accordingly. Maybe in the last corner, kind of could have gone by. Maybe Pekka would have made a mistake. You know, there's an opening. Then he goes for it and he gets by. So he wins. Or maybe he would have finished second. Now, because he was impatient, he ran into Pekka, ruined both of their races. He got a penalty. He finished seventh or eighth, right? So he threw that away because he was impatient. That's what you have to learn as a driver. So you have to read the situation, understand what's going on, adapt, not be too impatient, not throw away good finishing positions i agree with you i agree with you yeah so when you say it's a racing incident yes it is but Mm -hmm. it's a racing incident caused by him and when he adjusts his attitude and respect for the car in front he will have more consistently better finishes in races and he will have more good luck he will have better luck it is luck that he made himself do you understand Yes, Joseph, I That's agree That's why that. some racers are consistently better than others because they somehow are able to make these split-second decisions and adjustments subconsciously, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And with a track like this, you can see those decisions being made because everything's so visible because of the high yep. traction. Yeah. Uh, but I just to say previous to that, uh, about a lap or two previous to that move, uh, I felt that 
he kind of waited for Paco at one point in that same position, that same place. Yeah, yeah. And I felt that okay, he should have he should have gotten in front of him then. And so I think he just subconsciously went for that same move and thought Paco was going to do the same thing and just ended up we're ending him and taking him out. Unfortunate for Paco, uh, and unfortunate for JCC in the final because he was out to a commanding lead in the final. Not that I didn't ever think that Ronald Falk and Ongaro would catch him. But then I believe something broke in the in his sixty car. minute main. I yeah. don't think he ever had a commanding lead. At, him, at the beginning, he was pulling away while Ongaro and and Ronafalk were battling each other. From okay, what I, I don't see. remember that. Like I don't it, it think wasn't he like had a, a command, commanding but, lead at any point. Like the three of them pulled away. They he did. Was in the lead, they did. But I don't know. I don't think it was. I don't. I didn't know that him. he was like going like, oh, he's gonna win this shit. I didn't think I have that. I didn't think that point. either. Because I knew the outright pace that Ronald Falk had, I knew he would catch him up. I think so. But at the beginning, when Ronald Falk and Ongaro were battling between each other, he was starting to pull away, and then he had some diff failure or something happened to his car and his rear end. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunate for JCC, uh, he was very frustrated leaving this race. I know he even said he didn't want to race the. I think he took a mile. He didn't want to race the final on Sunday because he's pissed off and all this type of stuff. But I kind of felt like, hey, this is karma like coming back to you like you yeah, know 50 50 yeah he has a lot of speed he has pace there's uh he just has a few chinks in his armor to to fix you know uh in his head mainly <laughs> and then then uh i think everything will be fine and i do think he did one of the coolest moves at the race though can't remember who it was but uh he they come onto the straight and he i think it was lee martin actually and he passed him on the outside. So he went towards pit lane further, passed mm -hmm. the guy, and pulled in ahead. All mm. happening on the straight. So, I mean, his reds was screaming down the yeah. straight. It was so lean, and he was so fast. It was That was cool. I just happened to see it happen. Like, they come on the straight. He just pulls out, passes, pulls back in, like in F1. So it was that was cool. All right. Um, yeah, we'll see. World coming up. Paco. Paco the Ringer, it's okay. Uh, it, how's the car, Paco? It's okay. Yeah. Very finished. Um, you know what? So Max says you're not very finished, right? So what I'm come come to collision that you're very much finished, and Paco is very much finished, and that Max isn't very finished. No, uh, I think Pe Paco is sort of more smiley and happy than than your average Finn, I would say. Probably Maybe he was in smiling the quite a lot. He's a bit shy, but like. Just in the pits and stuff is definitely more outgoing than than most things, I would say. Okay. My first time ever seeing Peko, this is his third. Uh, well, he did three European finals in a row. Great finish for him in Barcelos. This, yeah. this guy's a jack of all trades, man. Yeah, he races like every class pretty much and does well too. So he runs fifth scale he's fifth scale european champion actually mm -hmm. and now he would have won but <laughs> ran out of fuel on the last lap yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no pit stops in fifth scale so and then uh eight scale euros he made the main first main for him in eight scale off-road and 10th scale he made the main in four-wheel drive uh i don't think he made the main two-wheel drive mm -mm. and then he's also going to the touring car worlds so he's really racing everything and i think that actually sort of helps him because he's really good at adapting so he's, he has a very broad skill set. And I think people often ask that, why are Finns so typically good in motorsport? Like, how is that possible? Because there's so few people. But then uh, you if you look at F1 or rally or even RC car racing, there are Finns there that are doing mm -hmm. well. And actually, I think that it has to do with sort of culture, cultural things and attitude of like when you do something like a hobby like this a lot of people take it seriously Serious? okay and they even so for just using Pekko as an example so he takes it seriously to where he wants to do well he wants to win but he applies all his sort of knowledge to how can i then win how can i improve so he understands things about setups. He tries different things. He dremels this. He drills that. He adjusts this. He shims this thing. And he tries all these things in all these different classes. So he gains a lot of knowledge. 
And then at this race, it was really good. And that's one reason why it went so well, because I understand the car a lot, but he mm -hmm. also knows things. So he said, hey, in touring car, we do this. In 10 scale on carpet, we do that. In four wheel drive, 10 scale, uh, when I made this adjustment, it was good. So we could talk about those things and figure out what to do to the car. And I could ask him about the car, how he wants the car to respond or react or where in the corner is he feeling something, you know, some more specific things, right? And mm -hmm. then he could, he could uh, reply to my question because he understood what the car is doing, what he's doing, and what my question really is. So our communication was good. And that's why I think that combination of our knowledge and then him being really skilled and talented, that was the reason we were able to do so well. And I mean, he, he I expected him to, to do well, but not that good. Like, yeah, yeah. That, you have so, to see his outright pace there, people, to understand how fast he was. Yeah, it was quite surprising, I would say. And I think his mom's going to make me some socks, so I'm happy about that. Uh, yeah. I can't say that I don't want to see him run my... Uh, uh, by the way, people... He had never driven the car until the day before this on a dirt track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was. So that's uh, even perfect. more impressive, you know? Yeah. That one more thing about him. He's the only guy that I know who drives <clears throat> better when you talk to him. So we had the headsets and I pretty, I mean, I was talking to him throughout the race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, in qualifying and practice everywhere, just sort of whatever I saw, like, let's say back left corner on the dirt, he was, he was looking a bit sketchy. Then I told him like, okay, next lap in the back left, just take it easy. Don't jump so far. Just stay to the inside there. That's the safest, fastest way. You know, the next lap he does it, you know? So like, I would just tell him things that I saw, or then uh, I saw that he was starting to push it a bit more. Then I just, you would calm him down. Like, you know, remember your fastest laps are the ones where you, enter corners a bit slower so you maintain your corner speed so just focus on that don't don't start pushing too much like all kinds of things like this i just kept talking to him and he he would uh, drive better and he even said it after the race that yeah i remember him telling you that yeah it, yeah it's i've you never like experienced that before you had a uh, you had a lot of smiles on your face this past weekend we'll talk about that in a minute um but uh i think having peco there and then i, I i'm not blowing smoke up your ass and i know people say well your favorite because you you're my uncle again and lefty you like this and but i think having him there helped david helped everybody on the team because everybody's my uncle look good there this weekend and then you obviously not racing helped a lot so um from what i saw because you know i could you know i was watching a lot of these cars, a lot of, a lot of the rc2 cars the my uncles look good out there they look confident and Paco was just like man that that he's not a kid he's like 19 he's good like and man if you, i would love to see this guy like focus on eight scale a little bit more and and see what he can do i don't know how much reindeer and whale blubber it's gonna cost to get him to ride drive a mayaka at the worlds but i wish he would because uh i think he'll do well on that track too to be honest he's talented he's very talented i would love to see peko go to america and race too I don't know if that, like that will be, but then you guys have those rough ass tracks in Finland too. So yeah. very impressive. Very impressive. M Max was right. Um, yeah, he's good. He's good. He's a jack of all trades. I like to see him master one or two. So uh, great. I think a great introduction to Peko. I mean, everybody in Europe knew him, but like the people that watch this race or who will watch this race or listen to this podcast, they're probably like, well, who the hell is Peko Ivan in? We need a nickname for him. I don't know what we're going to call him. Yeah, but, uh, we'll think of something. I'll think of something, uh, but it was great to meet him, and I hope he enjoys his contingency uh, prize, which was, I have no idea, but he is a bit upset because the steering wheel is on the right-hand side. But he was fun, too. Once he loosened up, and he was having fun, and then he was, you know, enjoying the camera and all that type of stuff. So that brings us to our last drive, and people might be like, well, he didn't win on, Sat on, on Sunday. Why are you guys leaving to last? Because, well, I just think that, in my honest opinion, David Ronafalk was heads over heels faster than everybody there this weekend. Simple as that. I just... Yeah, I mean, uh, that was very encouraging also for the future because like in the 60-minute main, his 10-lap average was faster than anyone else's best lap, which yeah. is, on this level, is pretty much unheard of, I would say. I mean... So, yeah, he was, 
he the cream was of the, uh, creme of the creme, man. Yeah, very fast. He, 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 I think he, because he, everybody made mistakes on this track, but like I remember in the 15 minute leg, so it was like him, I think Kanas, him, and Ongaro were battling at first. Well, I think it was that water. Then I think uh, he made a mistake, right? And then it was, um, and then after Kanas's mistake, it was like Boots and Ongaro just pulling away. And then I was, you know, I was there with Nick and you're watching it because that's all we can see. So we're watching that battle. And then I just saw like, Halfway through the race, or like ten minutes in, like that white nose or the Mayako of David just poking in, and I'm like, oh, but and I'm like, oh, but Nick, one of us coming, like and dude, like I got to watch him drive, so aggressive, like you can see that he was just man, like his ability to come back from mistakes, put his head down, and come back. This weekend was on all time high impressiveness, like. Wow, I, I honestly feel like if he would have not had that, no, I know for sure. If he had not had that um that flame out, because he did flame out prior to this first pit stop, just a miscalculation because a lot of people did actually. It wasn't any miscalculation. He ran out of fuel, but he wasn't supposed to. Like right, that he was wasn't. the in lap. Right. I know that there. It was like one minute before that what I meant by miscalculation right is that I think the weather threw the loop through everybody for a loop as well. Really hot that day. So I think just tuning was off a bit. His course attack was fucking fast, dude. Like that thing was one of the fastest engines on the straightaway. His ability to come back, his car was good. And like he just like he he got that flame out. He ran out of sorry, he ran out of fuel and was then got back up to second. Like, like so fast. And I'm just like, yeah, man, if this race was probably a little bit longer, he probably can't lap himself and 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 make a chase for Angaru. He caught a half a lap back and unlapped himself. That's in- insane. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then his, I don't know what happened in the end. I saw you guys pull him in something, a screw came loose or something. Yeah, fuck. That was really frustrating. So we have this new three piece rear hub. Mm-hmm. So it's really adjustable. You can adjust the height and length of the rear link with shims because oh. I figured that's something we need. Right. Because one, like moving it a whole over is too much. Even mm-hmm. we have different plates, it's a hassle to change the plates and then you can get you know halfway hole and you end up with so many different plates and stuff so i made a hub hub where you can shim the height and you can shim the length while still having sort of adjustment holes also but it the height is with one m4 screw from above and Mm. when when i was doing peko's car because this is the first race we had the hubs Mm -hmm. i checked those screws and i wanted to tell david hey remember that hub make sure to check those screws Mm -hmm. but he wasn't there and then i forgot about it and i never Mm -hmm. told him so when i saw his rear wheel flop over on the track you knew what it was yeah i'm like there's no way like yeah always because in life for me at least things always seem to happen like this i have a thought and then for whatever reason i don't do it and then shit hits the fan that's why i'm so paranoid always like if i have some Mm. thought i have to do it because I know you will forget that I will regret whatever that thought is like, not even if it's not racing. Mm-hmm. If I have some thought about something that could go wrong, then I make sure I make sure that that thing doesn't go wrong. Really? Because I know I think about it, it's gonna fucking happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. So, yeah, he was yeah. upset with that. But like I told him, I said, get that bad luck out of the way now. And he goes, I will put green Loctite on this next yeah, time. It's, it's this is what I'm saying. Like, it's not luck like you can you shouldn't say it's bad luck it's that's what you make yourself okay Mm -hmm. it's not bad it's bad preparation i understand what you're saying i understand what you're saying unfortunate for him but man he was incredible i think he's hit you can say that it's unlucky that it had to happen right then seven minutes Mm -hmm. from the end of the main yeah that part is unlucky but the reason it happened is not luck well, I should say, let's get these mistakes out of the way now. Does that matter yeah, yeah. for you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was, I mean, he was, and, and the thing about the Viking is like, yeah, he's not happy with six. He was upset. Like, I mean, you, he wanted to sweep. I know he did. And he was talking about that. And it would have been great for him to get the sweep. So I know he's probably going to try even harder in yeah. USA. But yeah. uh, he but... was very fast, Joseph. Very, yeah. he's, he did a form right now that I think he goes into this world championship next month as i mean he was a favorite before i think his 
even more of a favorite now? Well, honestly? I don't know. I think the same because, I mean, even this race, it didn't start like that. Like, even after he got fast, he still wasn't happy and he was still making mistakes. <laughs> and I think at one point in the race, it almost felt like Pecco had an edge over David, which was very insane to see, really. Because there were times when they were on the track together and I felt like Pecco had a slight advantage. Right, but that's where you I know? think... I and, think that's where David shines and he likes that competition. Yeah, but like, oh. there, were, there, there were times like uh, in uh, the practice runs where they look at four best lap times where Pecco was first. And I thought, okay, he's going to get this. But then David put in like some hot lap I know. or something. And I love boom, that. Boom, just tipped him, you know? I love that. So he has that ability. But you see, you can get fooled by that. It looks good on paper, mm -hmm. but kind of like the eight scale electric Euros where I knew he, yeah, it was fast, but I knew he's not going to win like this. Like, we have to figure something out. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't, and he didn't do that well in the mains. This race started out like that. He was right. fast, but I could tell it's not right. Like, Ongara is going to win this shit, you know? We have to figure something out. But we did, partly because we found things with Beko, and he tried them, partly because he was speaking with Adrian, and they thought of things, and he tried mm -hmm. stuff. So it was a mix of that, but he when he found that sort of good setting he needed and comfort, then, yeah, then he was on his own level after that. On his own. It was a great collaborative yeah. effort. I saw him talking to yeah. Adrian. I think having, I, I really think having Paco with that pace and that challenging his pace right mm -hmm. away also pushed him harder. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think and, so. I haven't really spoken to him about that, but I, I think so. It definitely helped. And it gave us some ideas for some things to try now before the world still so yes i'm confident but it's every race is different like that you have yes, to yes, make the yes. right choices to be able to you know be in it for the win confidence so, wise though i think he's on a high right now if that makes sense. yeah i would say so so congratulations to uh but I, and i even I, look i have to say congratulations to ongaro he found another way to win and he did he did what he had to do to win and he done it and wow, he almost took up Mauro too on that main. But uh, yeah, that goes to show you don't have to be the fastest guy all weekend to win either. So not saying that we're not yeah. saying that Ongaro was slow by any means. You know what I mean? He just wasn't. But no, but he has cramp. this. Yeah, this year he has had this uh, thing where he's not really the fastest early on, maybe not even semifinal. But then in the main, it's like he figures it out and drives really well. And then he sort of, then he gets it. So okay. yeah. It's. I never I doubt, the, even if he isn't the fastest in qualifying, whatever. There's no, not a doubt in my mind that when the main comes, yeah, exactly. he's going to be up there. So, um, how about you, Joseph? How was you? You, I have never seen you smile so much at a race. Uh, you looked like you embraced your race engineer mood. You look. You was. You know. You was doing well. So he's like, ah, oh, it's easy to smile when you're doing well. But I really. By the way, you're probably in a cabin sharing a TV with somebody. So I'm going to mute you. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to know, JQ, how you felt being a race engineer, watching from the sidelines. This is where I truly think you shine now because you're able to see what the, like you did, what you did with Pecco and, and it, it was shown in the team. Like, you know what I mean? Everybody was happy. Everybody's cars look good. And even that reverberated down to the RC2 guys, you was able to help people out. I think this is, this is the new this is where you are at your best, in my opinion. And it's not to say that you can't win races or you can't race anymore. You can't do anything like that. But I think you enjoyed yourself a lot more at this race. Well, this, yeah, like you said, it's easier because it also went well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that it was a bit more fun than I expected because it's also rewarding when you can see that you make a sort of noticeable difference to someone's racing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you you can help with car set up, set up decisions and driving and racing in general so when you know that you're making a positive difference to someone's racing and then you get results also that's also rewarding even though it's not me driving mm -hmm. so that was fun actually it was more fun than i thought it would and be it helped go, the whole entire team to race it, and not race yeah but that reverberated throughout the team and it helped everybody i mean i think with peko you're like all right this is a blank slate i can do whatever i want with him and that's where he was good 
Uh, and then obviously, just I think it was just a, a great collaborative at it, uh, a great collaborative effort. And I think uh, you need to do more of that, to be honest, because that's I think that's your your go your your path, in my opinion. So good job, and it's good to see you smiling and having fun. And then uh, where's the beers? Where's the beers? That's you, you still. Yeah, the I funny thing beers. actually is that um, when I race, the most uncomfortable parts are when I'm not racing. So between heats and evenings and mornings, and like I'm nervous or stressed those mm -hmm. times. But then I get on track and I'm okay. But now it's the opposite. So all the times between, I'm calm and it's chill whatever but then the actual race is when i get nervous mm. so it flips completely mm -hmm. so, so when i race i'm not nervous when i'm racing but between is not good but then now everything when not racing is fine and then the race is not good for stress levels so, yeah I, I like this jq battle to be honest with you um and there was no threat suicide watch for you there's nothing like that was a good positive weekend for you, and I want to say congratulations to you and your team. You done well. Yeah, and the only uh, the thing that made it even more stressful was we didn't really have pit guys because David didn't have anyone fly over, mm -hmm. so it was just David. And Humpus had his dad, Bit oh, had me, and uh, Alex had his dad. So the guys Scott, were thrashing though. I, I swear, yeah, every Scott. single race of their their hands were dirty and they never, these guys never stopped wrenching the entire yeah, time Scott, they were at this track. Scott was pitting for David, but then in the yeah. mains, I pitted for Pecco, Scott helped me, and then also for David. So David, I mean, Scott was doing the time for David, and then mm -hmm. I was doing the time for Pecco. And uh, the plan was to, you know, pit for both. So I would use David's fuel gun for him, Pecco's fuel gun for, or my fuel gun for Pecco. And <laughs> dude, that caused some uh, situations, let's say. So like in the sprint final, they were mm -hmm. quite close together, but we had to get them in on the same lap. So first, I think David came first, filled him up. I had the second fuel gun like between my legs. So mm -hmm. I filled up, threw that fuel gun down, and then Feko came in, grabbed the other fuel gun, filled it up. So double Just stacking. like in Double F1. stacking. Was, yeah, yeah, it was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. But then in the main, what happened? Because after David's flame out, then everything changed, right? Mm -hmm. So then it was tough, you know, because we were racing then two very different races, uh, David's and then Pecos. So, yeah, we managed. But, man, I, I, I don't want to do that again where I'm having to sort of remember two guys and take care of two guys. At the I same had time. fun on the Friday pitting for I pit for Mike Driscoll and uh, Rob Cockcroft and Chris Lovell. And then uh, I turn marshal for David the entire day. I had a good yeah. day Friday, running around. And my knee hurt. Yeah, it was. It yeah. reminded me of in 2018, the, in the 2019. Long main. Yeah, so in the endurance main, when David had the issue uh, with the screw falling out, mm -hmm. it was funny because right then Pecco needed to pit, right? So I almost ran out onto the track, and then Pecco said in the headset, "Hey, Pe hey, fill me up first, fill me up." So he was literally coming in the pit lane. So then I quickly just had to grab the fuel gun, fill him up, and uh, then deal with the uh, uh, David situation. Yeah, oh, no, I, had I, a think, lot of fun. I think that was the flame out, actually, because then when I was fixing David's car, I had also called Pecco in already. So I was literally like scrambling to fix his car, put the tie, mm -hmm. put the tie on finally, and then turned around, and then Pecco was coming in. So it was, oh, okay. that's the most intense pitting I've ever had. Well, it. You have fun, and I just wanted to say, uh, kind of reverberating through you there. Um, one second. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. I had a lot of fun with that. I enjoyed the racing. I I worked a lot with uh, the RC Racing TV crew, um, and I just have to say thank you to everybody that came up and supported and watched us. And I and I have to say that I think this was the best RCGP yet. Uh, I know. It took a while to get good. Italy was good, and then this is better. And I'm expecting the USA to be even the, the best one. So um, I just wanted to say that I think when you really look at this, I think the the whole team is clicking now better. Like the the media, like everybody's doing their part in the in the in the team. For right now, I know you'll say that it's not as perfect as you want it to be, but I think everybody's kind of hit their stride in this and. 
it's really cool. Like now we're all kind of friends. Like now it's I'm looking forward to seeing Stefan in America because his humor's his dry humor, you know, which you never know. And Mal, and then obviously Justin and Chris, and then David again. And it's really cool to work with this. It's really cool to see a group of a team put together of so many different nationalities and people from different cultures and everybody fitting in to do that little bit to make this happen. And at the end of the day, that's a good thing that RCGP has done. So yeah, and I it sounds I mean of that. sounds like it might be happening next year too, which I, is really I, I good. heard that and I heard the track possible tracks. So uh Isherwood's very I, I'm glad to see that too because you know I know after America he wasn't very happy and then that and then Italy. But uh I know David's very happy after this race. And yeah, uh it's good to hear talks of season three. Yeah, so, for sure. One thing that needs to be improved is just uh, sort of catching all the action, being mm -hmm. able to, you know, dig up recorded replays and stuff. Like when there's mm -hmm. important stuff that happens in the race, you really need to have that. Because yeah. if, if just imagine you're watching Formula One and Verstappen wins and Hamilton is second, but then last lap, Perez gets by and Hamilton drops back. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you you're like, what the fuck happened there, right? And then if saw, you don't I, get to see it, yeah, it, it's, it's really frustrating, you know. So it's it's really that's something hard. That has to be figured out. You, I will say this: uh, the position that we were in was really hard because you, I couldn't see the track properly. I could only see that little yeah, section of the track. This this is like the I'm just telling you why. Kanas is not, winging someone. There's no excuses. Like if you if you want to be the best and it's the premium coverage and series and all this, these things have to be addressed and you just have to make it work. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Especially no if it's like still, it it's pay-per-view, right? So mm -hmm. uh, people are paying to watch live. Mm -hmm. It has to be better. It has to be better. I agree with you, Joss. I, I, I agree with you, Joseph. Uh, no excuses, just make it better. And, and we will. The, but the, the, this is part of the thing where you, it can't. It doesn't happen by magic, right? So no, it has to be done. The teams need to play ball. They need to mm -hmm. understand. They need to do their best. RC2 guys, they need to show up and sign up. Sponsors, they need to support. Like if everyone pulls together, mm -hmm. this can be done. It's yeah. just a question of resources. If one man is funding it and doing it, losing money, you can only expect so much, right? I agree. So with you. if if this is something that is inspiring enough. It's proved to be something that's not uh, uh, a selfish venture. You know, this is something that's being done to benefit the whole. Yeah, benefit the industry, benefit all brands, all drivers, everything. So I if agree. people in the industry can see this and accept that we're, it's still going and it's going to go in the future, if people can come together. Then we can achieve what we want. What all of us want in the industry and what RCGP is trying to do. We can achieve better coverage, better formats, better racing, uh, a new benchmark. It, it's not magic. It requires everyone coming together, supporting it, and the right people having the resources they need to make it happen. That's what happens in other sports, and that's why we like to watch other sports. You know? I agree with you. I agree with you 100% there. Uh, also, I just wanted to shout out to Controller and guys real quick before we go into the drama stuff because they've been on a marathon of coverage and they're actually at this current moment covering the one, the Formula One of RC in um, in Italy. So check that out this weekend as well. Uh, but they done a great job and they, man, them guys working hard, man. They're working hard. They're working hard. I got to give them that. Working very hard. I look forward to maybe working with them a little bit at the Worlds here this upcoming and next month. All right, JQ, I know you don't have much time. Let's address all the negativity, all the shit fountains, all that bullshit that went on prior to this race. And I just, I'm going to say something. So I'm going to mute you for a second and you can unmute well, just because you have before that. Before okay. that, let's just cover the championship. Right. Oh, right. Shit. We forgot about that. Hold on. Let me bring up the points. So one let's thing that, of course, for us is for us as Mayako and David is impacted because he had this issue in the main. Now the driver championship points got really close. Mm -hmm. For the series, it's good, I guess, because Ongara missed the first race. But then because David had some bad races and Ongara uh, has had good races, 
I think it's just seven points. That's it. Them. So exactly. the last weekend in America will actually be a showdown now. Yes. It's close enough to where it makes a difference. It's it's gone. It yeah. It could be real close. So that's good for the series. Uh, for the team championship, that also changed now and is super close because I believe Associated just uh, what is it? Scampi Rosso. Team Associated. Yeah, I believe they're in front. They, Let me. They I'm just to look for passed this. S-Works. So both championships will be decided actually. So the one point weekend. ahead of one point ahead of S Works. And yeah. Mayaka has got fifty one one fifty one, S Works one seventy five, and Associated one seventy. People have forgotten that this is a series too. You know what I mean? And the points matter. Yeah. So, that's uh, by that, the way, that's um, something that I really hope the teams take more seriously next mm-hmm. year. Is that they care about the series and they send send the same drivers to all races. Yeah, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, by so. the way, uh, it's gonna it's gonna be really close in America. Uh, we know where it's gonna be in America, by the way. And all I can say is that it's gonna be bad ass. Well, there's a clue. I don't that. know that it's uh, actually hundred percent done. Okay, so it's ninety five point nine percent done, from what I'm told. So we don't know where it is yet. All right. So we have a clue. Okay. Uh, all right, Joseph, let's address some of the bullshit. I don't really want to go into too much detail about this because that just gives people power. But I have to say that I will say this to those people, you know, that I'm going to mute you because you just got a lot of background noise. So if you want to talk, just unmute, or unmute yourself, please. So leading up to this race, there's a lot of drama and negativity to, towards this race because of the BRCA and rules and all this type of stuff. And I get that there are rules in the BRCA that have to be, you know, that they do things for, for play. And I like that, but I understand that sometimes things have to go a different, you know, sometimes you have, you have to bend rules and, and flex with things. But there was like this race, RCGP bent their rules and opened up RC2 for everybody and made it fair and dropped the price and did all this type of stuff. And what really, I think what really aggravated me at the end of the day is that there's a very few vocal people that are very negative about this. I'm not going to say names. They know who they are. And at this point, I think that it goes further. Why would you the, not say names? Just right, say so that it's names. Skidmore. The Skidmore's, yeah. Fat Jesus. Yeah. Uh there's there's a couple of other David vocal guys, but mostly David. mostly Skidmore's and fucking and Fat Jesus, right? And Fat, Fat Jesus, David Gibson. Okay. Right. Was that and it's unfortunate because you know Fat Jesus and all we got me, you, Fat Jesus were all friends before. And I was really hoping that he would come to this race so we can probably like already hatch it, become friends again. And, and he didn't come. So I have something to say to all these negative people that didn't come. Her, you had her you had a chance to come see what RCGP was all about for yourself, and you guys chose not to come. You could have competed, you could have come up and watched, but you chose not to come. So, and to me, it sounds like you have no, you have no will. You will not. You don't want to, and you just refuse to accept anything that RCGP is done because you don't like it and whatever. At this point, the way you're trying to affect a man's business with his with his track and also the the race that you affected. Because you affected the RC2 entry. I just have to think that your, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Not your, your methods are not to protect RC, but just nefarious because you just want to hurt somebody. And I'm going to say, you know what, man? Dar- I know Darren Bloomfield didn't come to this race because he wasn't sure how it was going to work out with the BRCA. And by the time it worked out, he wasn't able to come because he couldn't get time off and all that type of stuff. Like, if you don't like RCGP, that's fine. Just fucking shut up. Like, for now, like, for me, honestly, for you guys, like, I really wanted to see this Kid Morris come race. I really wanted to see Fat Jesus. I wanted everybody to come out to this race and see what they've done so they could come and see what we're doing. But they chose not to. So from this point on, in my opinion, you guys can't have an opinion on RCGP. You had the chance to come. You had the chance to participate. We did everything we could or RCGP did everything that they could to make it more welcoming for you guys. Yes, you would say it's more expensive. Yes, I get that there's a national warm-up and this, and I get that. I understand that. But you had the chance. You could have hopped in your car, and you could have come up and come watch like a lot of people did, and you didn't. And 
like shame on you guys. Like what you're doing, your actions are nefarious, in my opinion. It's not to preserve the fairness of RC. You just did it because you wanted to fuck with people. And that's fucking stupid. And that's dumb. And we need to get over that. That's why RC doesn't go any further because of petty shit like that. So that's what I would say to them. I have nothing against you. I still want to shake your hands and I'll see you. I'll see people at the worlds and all that type of stuff. And I wanted to see it. But I think there's actions that you've done and, and continuing and it's continuing after this with the gluing of the sidewalls and all that shit. Like get over that stuff, man. Like the race came, people had fun. It was a positive race and you missed out. You lost all opportunity to come and criticize it. Now you, in my book, you can't criticize it. You never came and you had the chance. So just zip it up and go with the flow. That's how I look at it. We came, we did a good thing. And if we come back next year, we're going to do it bigger. That's how it goes down to. Like, it's just, I'm, it's no time for this petty bullshit no more. Like, we need to grow RC and we need everybody involved. Yes, you guys don't like this. You don't like that. You don't like that. But fuck, man. Like, you just, it just gets fucking tiresome. In fact, it, the fucking argument was still going on about glue, glue sidewalls and that started a whole nother shit. Like, at this point, you're just starting shit to start shit. Like, no real point. Just being an asshole. Stop it. Like, stop it. Like, it's not, it's, it's not necessary, in my opinion. That's what I would say to them. Let's just be friends. Let's race. If you don't like it, then don't go. You didn't go. So just be quiet. Like, you know what I mean? I never been to Neo. I wanted to go so bad. I like what the DXR guys done. I wanted to go so bad. I'll never say anything bad about that race because I think it's great. You know what I mean? Me and Dave, we may not see eye to eye on a lot of things, but that doesn't mean I want to see bad things happen to him. His races are, you, his races need to be successful too. They're important. You know, I'm not mad at Dave or any of them guys. I'll see Dave, I'll shake his hand. Bobby Moore, all them guys. My actions aren't nefarious. I want things to be better in RC. And you just spouting away on the internet, causing problems. You fought, like you did your job. You stopped a lot of the RC2 drivers from coming and, it's a shame because then guys would have had a good time, just as much fun as the other people that had. That's what I have to say to the boisterous few that caused all the issues for this race. What would you say to that, Joseph? I mean, I would just say that people always say that I'm negative and I complain or whatever. Yeah, I do. But I always have a point and it's always consistent. And I always want things to be better. So it's constructive. Okay. Yeah. And I don't just complain, I also do. Uh, so for people who complain, th they need to make sure that they have a point, they have a reason for it, and they have, uh, th they have a solution. So mm -hmm. they aren't just complaining to tear something down. They're mm -hmm. complaining because they want something to be better. Yeah, as an example, as an example, when I complain about DNC or Dave Lakin's races, I complain because there's a reason to complain and I provide a solution for how it can be better. And mm -hmm. people who go to those races who pay money to travel and pay entries and pay for the equipment and they attend the race, they would benefit if these changes would happen. And they agree that these changes mm -hmm. should happen. That's why I complain. Uh, so this is the same kind of situation. If you're just going to come up with uh, bullshit that isn't true and make up stuff and complain, for the sense, sake of it, doesn't make sense to me. Be constructive. Yeah. Provide a solution. I agree with you 100%. You probably said it more eloquent than me. I just kind of got tired of all the BS. And I think that you didn't attend and you had every opportunity to attend or just even come spectate and you didn't. And shame on you. Because you missed out on a good event. And I hope that uh, the people that listen to this, I'm not, you know, I just want you guys to give it a chance next time. Talk to the people that went. They had a good time. And all I saw is pure smiles and happiness. And that's what RC is about at the end of the day. Uh, so, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you to a few people before I did that. They came up to see me uh, and they supported things and they came and they were really special to me. Um i like to say, first off, shout out, thank you to Mike Driscoll and Matty Driscoll for the for the gifts. They bought us some Welsh bear. It was great to meet him and his son. I helped and it made me feel good to pit those guys and help them out. And thank you for the Legos. Uh, Jamie Docking for coming up two days in a row and checking it out. It was good to see him. I talked to him a lot on Facebook. 
Adam Reavy, and he brought his son up, Alex, so I could finally meet. Um, SJ Shantner and his son, Josh, I finally got to meet his son, Josh. It was it was crazy because, like, you know, so, I believe his son's paraplegic or, or whatever. And um, when I stuck my head out of the van, like, he knew me right away because he's watched me on YouTube and all that stuff. So that was pretty cool to me. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that I met. I know I've missed people in this. I'm sorry I can't remember everybody. But uh, you guys really made my trip over to the UK really special. And I thank you for that. And uh, oh, yeah, Peter Dern, too. Thank you for him coming up and, you know, seeing what it was all about. I'm glad people came up, saw the event, watched it and said, OK, this is what it's about. You know what I mean? And I thought that was really good. And I, I appreciate that support. And I, I appreciate that everybody that came up and shared the podcast on love. A lot of people shared you love JQ with Invisible Speed. And um, yeah, we appreciate that, man. And we look forward. I know that the UK is uh, definitely on the list of names of season three if it happens. So uh, thank you for uh, that. Brex Brexit ruined that. So I, I, I just, I mean, it was a lot of love shown for us. For the people that came there, they, they showed a lot of love, man. And and once again, a big shout out to John and his crew for all that they done because they worked their asses off the entire time. The entire time, JQ. So, yeah, and good job to all my colleagues that I worked with. I think, believe they did a good job. And it's so good to see Isherwood going home with a smile on his face after this race. You know, he deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves to have that race full too, by the way, and at least make his money back. Yeah. Even though that doesn't. I really so. hope that. Hello. Uh, so J really JQ is probably out in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Hope. He's breaking up somewhere, somehow. Uh, You're breaking up real bad, JQ. Hello. Okay, well, that's all I can do right now. All right, say goodbye and say thank you to everybody because you're, getting, you're out to sea now. And I'll take over from her. Yeah. Goodbye and thank you. <laughs> hey, have fun at the Swedish Nets. I'll see you in Spain next month. And um, yeah, we got a lot of work to do in between then. Uh, have fun. Good luck. And I'm going to let you go because it's uh, you're going to be running on the internet here. All right? Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you for your time. I'll hit you up when I'm done. Yeah. So with that said, guys, I just wanted to say... Thank you once again to everybody that came out to RCGP. Uh, I greatly appreciate that. We, we, I enjoyed the support. It was awesome to be back in the UK again. I never really got to see any eight scale racing while I was in the UK before. So to sit off and watch that. And it was so good to see people smiling. So good to see the young people out as well. Congratulations to the BRCA and the club scene in, in the UK. You guys have done a great job of uh, doing that. Excuse me. Uh, also, shout out to just everybody. All the RC2 drivers that came up, did this. All the Irish guys, Thomas Musso, his crew. All the RCGP drivers that put on a show. I know it's not easy for you guys having to focus on be ready for cameras and do all that stuff and all that type of stuff. But this is part of being a professional, in my opinion, and utilizing you in a professional way. To all the people who didn't sign up to watch RCGP, I get it. You don't want to pay for it. I get that. Uh, I believe they are trying. They did release the second final off. Uh, off. So it's already on YouTube. So you can see that. That's great. And check that out. Sure that RCGP's goal still is to do good things in RC. So just remember that. And um, it's not. It's not about making money. I mean, eventually it would like to make money, but it's not even breaking even now. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that came out, supported everybody that supported us online. Greatly appreciate it. I'm looking forward to going to the world, as a lot of you guys know. So I'll be doing that, and I'll be bringing a lot of content to you guys and just having fun. I'm super excited and super pumped for that. And you know what? I couldn't be doing any of this, these trips and all this type of stuff without you guys' support. So for myself personally, I want to say thank you. Um, the trip there really opened my eyes and really made me appreciate even more. And I just want to thank you to all the English people and the UK people that made me feel home there and everybody online around the world that supports myself and NNRC and JQ. We can't do it without you guys. And it's because of you guys, I get to go on these trips. So thank you.
from the bottom of my heart. To the people, to the negative, to the naysayers, um, I have no issues with you guys. I say, please uh, stop being negative about it and see the positive in it and try to come out and see it. I, or if you know, So that's how I look at it. Stop looking at all the negative things and try to look at the positive things that's being done. That would be my advice to you. And um, I hope I see you guys at some races in the future. Hopefully you change your mind. And if, if RCGP UK happens, you come up there. With that said, I'm going to be gone. Uh, we'll be back next week. Max and I, we'll be doing a regular podcast. I believe I'll have um, Mark Moon on. We're going to talk about his race that is coming up. Uh, Max is going to answer your questions and all that good stuff. Uh, and um, yeah, the world is going to be awesome. And I couldn't have been there without you guys. With that said, Nitro's the glory. Uh, oh, oh, hold on. I have forgotten a few things. I have to say thank you to all the awesome companies that support the podcast. If you're a company and you want to help me go to the worlds, because I still need to find the rest of the budget to go to the worlds, uh, hit me up. Uh, I'm going to be, I got some package deals and I just need, I need a little bit. Anything helps me go. And uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, being, being at like my first worlds ever. At a track that I've wanted to go to for so long, for so long. So I'm really excited about that. Got my pr my press pass pinching up. So that's good. I'm going to have Brian Baldo on her to talk about Red of One as well. But that said, thank you to Invisible Speed, TZO 200 Tires, High Tech RCD, TNR Fuels, Mayako, Beach RC, Techno RC, Lugs Racing Tires, the JQSM, sorry, G Spec RC Tuning for all your cabling needs, Papa Willis Traction Tonic for all your traction needs. Racecraft USA, they just combined with True Form to re release a really cool world shirt. I'm going to pick that up myself. Uh, I believe you ordered from True Form. I like that. Out the other box thinking it looks pretty cool. I'm going to pick up one for myself. You can pre order it now on True Form. Also, big shout out to Clinic RC, RCGP. Thank you for everything, all your help. Control, all done, guys. Thank you for everything. House of RC for all your support and what you do. Shout out to David Ronafalk. Jared Tebow at Alexander Hagberg, as well as Robert Badier, my boy RC Kevin. I hope he's going to get back racing. With that said, Nitro's the glory, E Buggy is the pays the bills. Thank you to everybody in the UK for the awesome hospitality. Lefty is out. Jakey was out a few minutes ago. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Talk to you guys later. <laughs>